When you hear the word polyester, you probably think of that tag on your t-shirt or jacket that says 100% polyester. Maybe you even picture the shiny disco shirts of the 1970s. But polyester isn't just a fashion statement, it's one of the most widely used synthetic fibers in the world. It's in your clothes, your curtains, your car seats, even in things you probably never realized. But what actually is polyester? How did it come to dominate closets and industries around the globe? And why does it still matter so much today? Let's break it all down, right here, on History of Simple Things. Polyester, at its core, is a man-made fiber. Unlike cotton, wool, or silk, which come from plants and animals, polyester is a synthetic material created through chemical reactions. The name itself comes from the fact that it's a polymer, meaning it's made up of long chains of repeating molecules and ester, which refers to the type of chemical bond that holds those chains together. In simple terms, it's plastic that's been spun into fibers. Most polyester is derived from petroleum-based chemicals. The primary raw materials are ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid, which are both derived from crude oil. When these two substances are combined under heat, they undergo a reaction that produces a molten polymer. This gooey plastic can then be stretched and spun into thin fibers that look and feel a lot like natural threads. That might sound a little strange, wearing plastic on your body. But this is exactly what gives polyester its strength, versatility, and resistance to things like shrinking, wrinkling, or stretching. Polyester isn't as old as wool or linen, but it has its own fascinating origin story. It was first developed in the late 1930s by British chemists John Rex Winfield and James Tennant Dixon. By 1941, they patented a fiber called terraline, the first commercial polyester. Soon after, American company DuPont, which had already found success with nylon, began producing polyester in the U.S. under the name Dacron. By the 1950s and 60s, polyester had gone mainstream. Advertisements boasted it was a miracle fabric that didn't wrinkle, didn't shrink, and dried almost instantly. By the 1970s, polyester was everywhere, from workwear to glamorous disco fashion. However, it also gained a bad reputation during that era for being stiff, sweaty, and uncomfortable. People joked about polyester being cheap or plastic Y. But polyester didn't fade away. Instead, it evolved. Thanks to new technologies and improved manufacturing, today's polyester can feel soft, breathable, and almost indistinguishable from natural fibers. That's why it's made such a strong comeback in everything from athletic wear to luxury fabrics. You may think of polyester only in terms of clothing, but its applications are far broader. In fashion, it's often blended with cotton or spandex to create fabrics that are comfortable but still durable. That's why so many t-shirts are labeled as polycotton blends. Polyester adds wrinkle resistance and strength, while cotton adds softness and breathability. In the world of sportswear, polyester is a superstar. Brands use it to make lightweight, moisture-wicking fabrics that help athletes stay dry and cool. It's also the reason your workout clothes don't stay soggy with sweat. Beyond clothing, polyester shows up in home furnishings like carpets, curtains, bed sheets, and upholstery. Industrially, it's used in ropes, conveyor belts, tire reinforcements, and even as insulation. If you've ever come across a plastic water bottle, chances are it's made of polyethylene terephthalate the same family of polyester.
Like any material, polyester comes with strengths and weaknesses. On the plus side, it's incredibly durable. It resists shrinking, wrinkling, and fading, which is why it holds color so well. It's also quick drying, making it convenient for active lifestyles. For manufacturers, it's cheaper and easier to produce compared to many natural fibers, which is why it's so widespread. But the downside is just as important to consider. Polyester is essentially plastic, which means it's not biodegradable. Old polyester garments can linger in landfills for decades. Washing polyester also sheds microplastics, which can end up polluting waterways and harming marine life. Another drawback is comfort. Although modern versions are much better, polyester still doesn't breathe as well as natural fibers like cotton or linen. That can make it feel less pleasant in hot and humid conditions. Polyester remains the most popular fiber in the world, making up more than half of all fiber production globally. Fast fashion heavily relies on it because it's inexpensive and adaptable. But with growing awareness about sustainability, polyester is at a crossroads. The good news is that recycling technology is improving. Many companies are now producing polyester from recycled plastic bottles, giving waste a second life in the form of clothing or textiles. This RPT, or recycled polyester, reduces dependence on new petroleum and helps cut down on plastic pollution. However, it's not a perfect solution since the fibers can still shed microplastics. Looking ahead, scientists are experimenting with biodegradable versions of polyester and blending it with other materials to reduce its environmental footprint. The challenge is balancing convenience and affordability with sustainability. Polyester has transformed the textile industry once already. Maybe its next big chapter will be an eco-friendly innovation. So what exactly is polyester? It's more than just a synthetic fiber. It's a material that reshaped fashion, influenced consumer habits, and continues to dominate industries around the globe. It's strong, versatile, and affordable, but it also raises important questions about sustainability and our relationship with synthetic materials. Next time you pull on a polyester shirt or sit on a polyester sofa, you'll know there's a whole world of science, history, and technology woven into those fibers. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.